Hello guys, so continuing on with the 2024 AMC 10A, today we're talking about problem 11 through 15. How many ordered pairs of integers m, n satisfy n squared, square root n squared minus 49 is equal to m? So, n squared minus 49 minus m. And we see that this is 1, 2, 3, 4, or infinitely many. So, we can honestly just test values. So first, n squared minus 49, we square both sides, is equal to m squared. We notice that there's a Pythagorean triple here. n is equal to 25, and m is equal to 24. Because, well, Pythagorean triple, you know that 7, 24, 25 makes it the right triangle. So, likewise, n is equal to negative 25, and m is equal to 24 works. That's already two solutions. So we knock this out the pole. Well, also, since 49 is a perfect square, we can see that n is equal to 7, and m is equal to 0, and n is equal to negative 7, m is equal to 0. Knock these two out. And, well, this is four solutions. We can't possibly have any more, because they have to be integers. So we know it's not infinitely many, so we end up with d4. Problem 12. Zelda played the Adventures of Math game on August 1st and scored 1,700 points. She continued to play daily over the next five days. The bar chart below shows a daily change in her score compared to the day before. What was Zelda's average score in points over the six days? So, the key thing to keep in mind here is that this is day two. Day three, day four, day five, day six. So, on day one, we have 1,700 points, like they say. On day two, we add 80. On day 3, we subtract 90 from that. On day 4, we subtract eight, uh, 10. On day 5, we add another 60. And on day 6, we subtract 4. So, and we just divide this over 6. So we add this up. This is a 3, 400. Knock these 2 out. 1780. Plus 1690, plus 1680, 0, 8 plus 9 is 17, 17 plus 8 is 25, 2 plus 7 is 9, 9 plus 6 is 15, 15 plus 6 is 21, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, 5150, 5150, these two are out. We add 1740 onto this. We get 0986. And then adding the three four hundred from again to nine two one zero two nine zero. So this gives one zero two nine zero. And dividing this by six gives us one seven fifteen e. So now we're talking about problem thirteen. Two transformations are said to commute if applying the first fall by the second gives the same result and the second fall by the first. Consider these four transformations of the coordinate plane. Of the six pairs of distinct transformations from this list, how many commute? So we can start by labeling these. So we can do one, two, three, and four. So let's get a coordinate plane over here. Sorry, this is a little bit big. Right here. So let's say this is the coordinate plane. If we do 1 comma 2 first and 2 comma 1 respectively, so let's say we use the point 1 comma 1. Well, what's translation 1? 2 units to the right, it goes to here. And then for the second translation, well, flipping it 90 degrees counterclockwise over the origin throws it here. So now, this is 1 comma 2. Now, let's do 2 comma 1. So, we flip it 90 degrees over the origin, lands here. Then, we have to shift it over by, you have to shift it over by 2 units. So, what we result in is this point and this point, which are obviously not the same point, so this is not does not work. So now let's try one comma three and three comma one. 
1 comma 3, well 1 you would move it to here, and then tr translation 3 is reflection across the x-axis, so here is what we end up with. If we do 3 comma first, we reflect it over the x-axis and then move it over 3. And these are the same points, so this works. So now, 1 comma 4 and 4 comma 1. So doing 1 first, we move it to here. And then doing 4, which is a dilation of size 2, I believe. Cut this out, I'm fucking frozen. Shitty ass website. Okay, back. So we see that 4 is a dilation center at the origin with scale factor 2. So, scaling this up by 2, we go from 3 comma 1 to... 6 comma 2 it's right here and then if we do 4 first we go to 2 and then we do so this is clearly not the right point next let's actually undo this 2 comma 3 and 3 comma 2 respectively so 2 comma 3 2 is reflecting is rotating it 90 degrees counterclockwise over the origin so we can land here and while well, 3 is flipping it so we get here if we do three first, we get we land here, and then ninety degrees clockwise is back here. So obviously no. Two comma four and four comma two. Actually, hold on. Keep on forgetting to erase this. So two comma four and four comma two. Two comma four, we flip here, and then we size it up to here. So if we size it up first, we get here. And then we flip it, and this is good. Lastly, th 3, comma 4, and 4, comma 3. So, 3, comma 4, 3, flip it over, and 4, we dilate it. And then 4 first, go here, and then dilate it. So this works. So, 1, 2, 3, there are 3 correct transformations. Alright, so now we can begin doing problem 14. One side of an equilateral triangle of height 24 lines on line L. A circle of radius 12 is tangent to L and is externally tangent to the triangle. The area of the region exterior to the triangle and the circle and bounded by the triangle, the circle, and the line L can be written as a root b minus c pi, where a, b, and c are positive integers, and b is not divisible by the square of any product. What is a plus b plus c? All right, so we can, every good geometry problem starts with a diagram, make equal a triangle here, and we can draw the circle here. My fault here. And we know tangents are 90 degrees. So, we notice that this is 24, obviously. And, well, we should do some angle chasing first. So let me actually size this up a little bit. So we draw this line down. 60 degrees, so it means this is 120 degrees. Notice that these two are, e are equal because of equal tangents, which means that we can draw a line connecting them, and these two angles are 30 and 30 because of e isosceles triangles. Since this is 90, this is 60. 60 plus 30 is 90, 60 plus 30 is 90, and since these two are, are equal, this is 60 degrees as well. So this is good. We found out. So what we want to find is this small area right here. 
is how we can how do we do that? So first, we know the radius is twelve. And so we can draw a line down connecting these points. So hold on. Let me erase some of this. Okay. This is this is thirty degrees. This is sixty. So this is thirty, sixty, ninety. So this is just twelve over root three, or just four root three. So we just need to find the area of this equilateral triangle plus this area of the small area. So the small area is one and a half times. 4 root 3 times 4 root 3 times sine 120. And this is the fastest way as we're trying to go for speed, but there might be alternate solutions. So I would highly recommend looking on AOPS. Half. And the equilateral triangle is 12 squared root 3 over 4. So sine 120 is sine. 180 minus 60, which is sine 60, which is just root 3 over 2. So, the area of this small triangle right here is 4 is 12 root 3. And the area of the equilateral triangle is, is um, 36 root 3. So, our total is 48 root 3. But now we have to subtract this part, the part of the circle. So what is this part? Well, the central angle is 60 degrees. So what we can do is we can do 12 squared pi over 6, 60 over 360. So this is just 24 pi. So our final solution in this case. Sorry. So our final solution in this case is 48 root 3 minus 24 pi. So let me see. That's an answer choice real quick. Pause. So let me see if that's an answer choice real quick. Adding this up, we get 48 and 27. 575D is our answer. Now to problem 15. Let m be the greatest integer such that both m plus 1213 and m plus 3773 are perfect squares. What is the unit digit of m? So in order to maximize m plus 1213, we should make this be a prime and m plus 3773 a prime. So the closest prime is p plus 1 squared. And this will maximize m. This is the, the max m can possibly be. But this will mean that it'll work. And you can take that how you want. So m plus 1, 2, 13 is equal to p squared. m plus 3773 is p squared plus 2p plus 1. And so subtracting these or plugging this into this equation, we get 2560 is equal to 2p plus 1. And if you caught my foreshadowing, this is impossible. This is an odd number. This is an even number, which cannot equal. So what's the next best thing? If we change this to p plus 2. So this will change it to m plus 1, 2, 1, 3. And m plus 3773. And we can see by doing the math, we get the 2560 is equal to 4p plus 4. Dividing 4 on both sides, we get 640 is equal to p plus 1. So p is equal to 639. Now we have to do some quick calculations, or not quick. This is 9 times 639, 8, 9, 3, 27, 5, 3, 
five seven five one seven one nineteen and then four three three eight adding all this up one plus two one plus seven is eight um six fifteen eight one zero four oh eight three two one four oh eight three two one subtracting one two one three gives us eight zero sorry not zero one second one zero one seven zero four and this is equal to m so the unit digit of this is just eight e thank you all for watching and if you like the video make sure to check out some more on my channel and i post stuff very similar to this all right thank you